my mind made up. Amen. Y'all did good on that one. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody's going to be dunked underwater, so we might as well sing about the one that walked on it. Amen.
God, I believe he'll do it again. Amen. 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 How many believes that? Amen. How many believes he'll do it again? Amen. Got one more song here.
Praise God. It's always good to see people making their faith and their submission to the Lord evident to the body by baptism, isn't it? <clears throat> we all know that we're no more saved by baptiz- bab- baptizing, by being baptized, but it's a statement of our faith, amen, that we are buried with him, we'll be buried with him and we will rise with him, amen. How many is going to go in the resurrection? I want to go in one of them, amen. <clears throat> Tyler, uh, we were driving yesterday and uh, the clouds, some cirrus clouds, it was the real high clouds up in the air when they look very wispy and you can tell that it's a f- really fast wind blowing up there and uh, they just look really pretty, and Tyler was looking at him. He said, isn't that so pretty? He said, it's just so pretty. And, I said, and we said, yeah, it is. And it looked like, we could see what he was saying. It looked like angels holding hands and flying. And he said, uh, "He said, what if that's like the rapture, you know, and they're just going across? I said, well, son, we're in trouble because we're still here. <laughs> so uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have looked as nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, on that note, it's good to see everyone's here this evening. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for this day. God, we thank you for the wisdom and knowledge that you have given us in our life. And God, we just give you thanks for the wisdom and knowledge that you're getting ready to give us. Lord, I pray that you wouldn't let One word fall from my mouth that you wouldn't utter. I pray, God, that you would send your Holy Spirit to move upon the people listening, whether online or in this congregation. I pray that you would make our hearts receptive to your word. And I pray, God, that you would plant something there that's only from you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Praise God. Um, I believe we're going to either pray, I haven't heard, Becky, do you know if we're going to pray for everybody going on the trip Wednesday night? Has anybody said? We might get some of you down tonight, maybe we'll do it again Wednesday uh, in in one of the two services, at least we'll get everybody, amen? We have our group leaving on Friday, um, minus... Minus me, I want to go, but maybe next year. Um, I'm going to be talking tonight about something that I feel right now that I will be speaking on this some more next Sunday morning uh, because I think it's a very important um, topic that many people neglect. Um, Imagine if you have the power to do something, you have the power to stop some horrible crime. You could do it. It would be easy for you and you don't. You just sit there and you watch and you say, I just, I don't know if I want to get involved. I don't know if I want to, to stop this. I could even pick up the phone and call the police, but I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. I mean, that, I'd feel real bad about myself, wouldn't you, if I didn't do something? Well, we have power. We have authority. And I want to talk a little bit about power and authority because if you are saved and you're one of his, you already have a kind of authority because you're made in his image. But when you become saved, there is a divine authority that can only come from God. Um, because you're made in his image, you have, an author- you have authority. Uh, it's the same authority that is inherent in you because you were made in his likeness. That's, it's that same authority that allows one of his creation to say there isn't a God. 
It's funny, the authority that they receive, the authority that they get from God, they use to tell the one who gave them that authority and created them, they use that authority to say, you do not exist. And it's only by that authority that they can say that. But when we become saved and we submit our lives to him, God gives us a divine authority. And it takes that divine authority to have access to the power of God. Um, I'm going to get into this a little bit deeper in just a moment. But let me open up with uh, some scripture that I want to read to you. Uh, Ron, you may have to click it. It's not... uh, Coming up. I may have not even taken the output off. Here we go. Is it working? Hold on. Technical difficulties here. If you, want, uh, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. This is going to be verse 11 through 32. Um, I'm going to be reading, and that's why I wanted to bring it up. I'm going to be reading from the New American Standard for this story. I've read this parable many times, and uh, but I want to... Read it from this version. Let's see if we can get this up here. If not, I'll move on. Anything? Will it let you advance it? Hmm. We're having some issues with this computer. I'm not sure what's what's going on with it, but uh, we'll move on. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 32 in the New American Standard. It says, and he said, a man, and he being Jesus, he said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. And there he squandered his estate with loose living. The King James Version says riotous living. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country and he began to be impoverished. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country. How many have ever worked for a citizen of another country? Come on. Whether you believe it or not, you have at some point. You know, that's one of the things that I love about being a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. No matter where I work, I am really, I don't look at it as being employed there. I'm deployed there. God can give me a job somewhere where they don't even want to hire me if he wants to. That's why, that's why some places can have a hard time getting rid of you if, uh, if God wants you to be there. You can remember many times in the Bible where they would get the disciples and they would be preaching in Acts and they'd say, listen, you don't be preaching in this name around here. And Peter would tell them, say, should we obey you or obey God? And the Bible says that uh, the Pharisees would uh, uh, threaten them some more. And then send them on their way. That's all they can do is threaten you when they have no power over you. Uh, But this son was in a bad, perilous place. Because he was disconnected from the kingdom that he was from. He was in another country. And he did not have any connection with the place that he had come from. All he had was a portion of goods that were allotted to him. And guess what? When you're no longer connected to the source, that portion will run out and will not be uh, filled back up again. Uh, you can get away from God for a little while. I, I see people who, 
And they want to come in and they want to get their tank filled. They usually come on Easter and, and Christmas. But when you do not come in regularly, listen, I, I, anytime I talk to people who, uh, about this that don't go to church, they say, this is their thing they say. Well, you don't have to go to church to go to heaven. Do you not hear that all the time? Uh, the Bible says to be assembled together. Um, you know, it would be like me saying, well, I don't have to take classes. I don't have to go to school in order to get a, a degree. Listen, you need education somehow. And so there's something you have to do. You have to get, be a part of that material, read that material, and you got to get that material in you. Amen? What better way to learn how to be a kingdom citizen and learn from the word than to be associated with all the people who are of the like, same like mind? I have, uh, I've never seen somebody who wants to become something not be influenced by people that could be role models in of the people that they want to be. Amen? If I was wanting to be an engineer, guess what? I need to get on some forums and talk to some engineers. I need to get a job where I am associated and affiliated and surrounded by other engineers. Why? Because if I'm around other engineers, I'm going to get education by learning. I'm going to be around them. I'm going to see things. I can't go and hang out at the fire, the fire department and learn about being an engineer. I've got to associate with the very people that are supposed to be a part of my fraternity. Amen. So uh, some folks say, well, I don't have to go to church to go to heaven. Listen, if you really want to be there, <clears throat> you're going to want to be around the people that are trying to go to the same place. Anybody ever ride public transportation? I would, uh, I'm sure they would love to say, listen, I know these benches that you have and these signs you have, but I don't want to get out there in the cold. I, can y'all just run by my house? No. If you want to get on the bus, you need to be at the bus stop. Is this the truth? <clears throat> so he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country. Everybody say Disconnected. He was disconnected with his home country. He didn't have any power. Amen. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. You know, that's the best the devil will give you when you're living for him. Amen. And, you know, and it's funny because you may think this ain't so bad. I am always amazed at how the enemy has conditioned us to be poverty-minded, to be weak-minded. Uh, I, I, I find it amazing that so many Christians, they read about the power Jesus had. They read about the power the disciples had. They read about Abraham, how he prospered. They read about David, how he prospered, how Solomon prospered. They read about all these things. But for some reason, at some point in time, there was this uh, school of thought that come along that listen if you're going to serve for him you better be suffering all the time you better be beat and battered and beat down and just weak and, and you better be poor because if you got some money you can't be serving God I heard a preacher that I really loved one time he was talking about when they first started back in the 70's you know people called them a cult because uh, they didn't like what they were starting you know, they were, their music was different because they were trying to get a hold of the young people. And that church started growing. And, I mean, they had thousands of people at this church. And I've listened to this man. He's a man of God. And I've seen him do uh, many wonderful things. I've seen miracles at services that I went to. Um, <clears throat> And so these people were questioning, you know, what they were doing. And they began, as they began to grow, they, the people on the island started telling him, saying, listen, you know, all the rich folks go over there. And he said, that's fine if y'all want to say that. He said, if you come here, we'll make you rich too. <laughs> it's not about money, but God will prosper you. Prospering doesn't mean that you're rich. 
but it means all your needs are supplied. Amen? If there is a lack of something for too long, I question whether everything is the way it should be. There are seasons of lack, but I know, I know that it's not permanent. The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The thing is, you have to make sure that you're his people. Amen. He takes care of his people. Oh, praise God, you got it up. What was wrong? No idea. That's the computers for you. I love them and I hate them. <clears throat> So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country and he sent him into his fields to, field, to feed swine. Verse 16. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating. Man, what a state. And no one was giving anything to him. <clears throat> Verse 17. But when he came to his senses, how many have come to their senses? I tried to live my way for a long time. I was unhappy. I tried to take things and consume liquids that uh, would make me feel better. And after a little while of consuming these things, I did feel good, but guess what? It's not permanent. And when I finally begin to, this stuff begins to wear off, Guess what? I have less money than I had. My problems are bigger, and I feel even worse than I did before. It didn't do anything for me. So here's this son who has wasted all of his father's portion that his father gave him. He's found himself in another country. He is ready to uh, work for a citizen of another country, even though he is a prince, but he is a disconnected prince. But when he came to his senses, I imagine he was looking at these pods and looking at these pigs. You ever seen pigs eat? It's, it's not a pretty sight. I imagine he's looking at it and he's thinking, wait a minute. I don't have to do this. Surely I can get something from my father, the king. But when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired Men have more than enough bread, but I am dying here with hunger. I will get up and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. Verse 20. So he got up and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. You know, that's just like the Lord. Because, you know, how many in here will raise your hand and say, at one point you were saved and then you had a time where you walked away? There is a part of us that feels like I've got to re-earn his respect. I've got to re-earn what God thinks of me. I've got to re-earn, and you don't have to. All he wants you to do is reconcile, reconcile, recommit, amen, repent. He wants you to turn back to him. And it's the same way with him. He doesn't wait for you to come back and you've got to, i got to start going to church and prove myself. Listen, we have to do that with people. We don't have to do that with God. He sees our heart. Amen. He's not like these Christians. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to prove something to us. Listen, you may have to Show them that you're serious if you've messed up many times. I mean, if somebody steals a dollar from me and keeps stealing money from me, I'm not going to put them over my bank account again just because uh, they said they have gotten saved. But God knows your heart, and you don't have to prove anything to him. He knows whether you're serious or not. Amen? 
So when you turn to him and you come to him and you repent, guess what? He's just like this king. He sees you from afar off and he comes and he meets you right where you're at. All it takes is you submitting yourself to him once again. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out the best robe. Oh. I want you to think about yourself right now. Think about the state that you were in at one time when you decided to dedicate or rededicate your life to him. Didn't you feel horrible at the time? You felt bad, you're crying. Probably have, maybe you had, depending on where you were at, you might have had snot running out of your nose. You just, you, you feel horrible. I've done so much wrong. I'm not worthy. I love to see people in that state where I can tell they are just giving everything over to him. Falling into his arms, amen. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out the best robe. God has the best for you. And put it on him. And put a ring on his hand. What did the ring symbolize? Power. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fattened calf. Kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And they began to celebrate. Now, his religious son was in the field. Come on. Uh, every time I read this, this is exactly what I think about. Because there are always some people that are in the church and they've been in the church a long time and they want to be recognized as being in the church. I've been sitting on this pew. I've, I've heard preachers before. I've heard preachers before when they were talking about somebody who people had recognized because this person had returned to the Lord and he was on fire for God. And he said, you know, everybody's talking about what he had been through and now he's turned back to God. And he said, but why is there no recognition for me? I mean, I've been serving the Lord for this many years. And I thought, he don't get it. A preacher. If that is that preacher's mentality, that whole church is in trouble. God have mercy on that church. His older son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. Look where he was. Older son was where? In the field. What was he doing in the field? Working. I've been working for the Lord. Where's my recognition? You know, this, man, Lord, how mercy. This right here is something that can keep a church from growing because you can have a church that has people in the field, they're working, and if some person, some vagabond has been out of the field and they hadn't seen their sweaty face out there and they hadn't had dirt on it, they just showed up and people began dancing and playing music for them. Oh, oh, they are going to be abusive to them. They're going to exile, exile them. They're going to ostracize them because they hadn't been around here enough in order to get that kind of respect. Oh. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost, and I'm trying not to quench, but trying not to hold back. Listen. Oh, Jesus. 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 Y'all worship the Lord for just a second. Oh, na ma sha tai. Kora ma sha na 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 na. Uh, 
Ana Mayora Musho Dora Daba Shatai. I remember my mother and my aunt were wanting to spend some time with my grandmother. This is a few years before she passed away. And my grandmother was supposed to sing at a church. She sang at all kinds of churches. I mean, I can't even remember all the churches that we went to. I didn't, like I've told y'all before, I, I didn't know you could be a member of a church till I was older because we went to so many all the time. And I remember she had uh, got permission to sing one Sunday and Sunday night, and she went, and my mother and her sister uh, wanted to go with her and spend some time with her, and they were wearing pants. And it was, this wasn't a woman pants wearing church. And the preacher seen him. And the first thing he started on before anything ever happened is he started preaching. And he was looking right at him and saying, we don't believe in wearing pants, women wearing pants in the church. It's an ungodly, I mean, just looking right at him. There's only like 10 people in the church this is why there's 10 people in the church. Really, there's eight because my mom and my aunt are visiting. <laughs> and the guy went on for like 10 minutes until my mother and my aunt decided maybe we should get up because they felt like he wasn't going to stop. And I'm sure these clothesline saints got up and started shouting when they left, we run the devil out of here. <laughs> we laugh because we've probably known somebody that's like that or churches that are like that or experienced things like that. But are there individuals, are there people that we may not agree with to some extent and instead of creating an environment where they can come in and let the Holy Ghost change them. If they don't change for us, oh, God, help them. We want a church of love. Amen. We've got a Dominican trip that everyone's getting ready to go, go on. Imagine if we had some new people, we had some new youth come and they wanted to go, and they got excited about going. And they went over there. Now, I'm just using this as, uh, as a teaching tool. This ain't reality here. But when they get over there, they're ignored because they're not a part of the clique. Wouldn't that be bad? That would be horrible. I was nervous the first time I went. And I remember that right before I went was right when we were having all of those, that soaking. And I remember we would praise and worship in the church. And I, I sat down with Betty and Marquita. And I, asked, I was asking them questions about going over there. And I, I mean, I learned so much for them. They, I mean, they were preparing me to go. And I remember they were telling me all of these things that I could not eat. Can't eat this, can't eat this, can't eat this. You got to be careful about this. Now, it's gotten better even since I've been over there. And I know it's got a whole lot better since they first started going. And I'm asking, you know, I finally said, well, what do you eat? And Marquita said, very little. <laughs> and so I stick to certain things. And that is the only thing I eat over there. But... If they had ignored me and they said, who does this guy think he is trying to come over here? We've been going on this mission trip for a long time. He can't be a part of this group. Who knows? I might have just been out there eating all kinds of stuff and got sick and they might have got exactly what they wanted. I never would have went back. How many want to see more people come into this building. What if they have gifts and they want to be a part of what you're doing? 
What if you pull up and they're in your parking space? (laughs) What car is this? That is where I always park. And we know everybody's cars. And we quickly realize that's not, that's not anybody's car that I know. Uh, who do they, do they? Shouldn't Donnie and the security team be out here telling them this is not your spot? <laughs> it's funny. It only takes one thing. We laugh about it, but it only takes one thing to make us, hi, how are you? Yes, I, I, you drive the Buick LeSabre, right? Yes, I, I think I know who you are. That's usually where I, that's usually where I park. I'm just saying. <laughs> you can park there if you want. We don't have a sign parking, but there is plenty of parking over on that side in next service. Would that not be Horrible. I want to see people come in and use their gifts. When's the last time this piano has been played? Other than hope, when's the last time these drums have been played? We have seats in here that have probably never been sat in. I know we do up there. I want God to use every part of this building for his glory. If we want him to use every part of this, then we have to be willing to let him use every part of us. Listen, we don't have different things that we deal with today. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Jesus had to deal with things that even we have to deal with today. I mean, he had two of his own. When he, they seen somebody else Praying and preaching in his name. What are they doing? Praying for people in the name of Jesus. They're not one of the 12. I'm gonna, we're going to straighten this up right now. They're not a part of the, this, this uh, Jesus disciple group. And they're over there preaching in his name. Jesus, listen, that, these people over here preaching in your name. Call down fire from heaven and burn them up. We could have, I would hate if we had someone come in that had a beautiful gift for, for singing and they want to lead and they want to get up there and they try. Listen, you better get off this. Listen, you just, you, you have to upgrade later on. You just have to sing without a mic from right now. You just, you've earned standing up here and that's it. Wouldn't that be horrible? If you're uncomfortable, you just need to talk to the Holy Ghost because it's uncomfortable preaching this, but he's just, this ain't in my notes. You can come read them afterwards. <laughs> Listen, the Lord is trying to make us ready. We are ready physically with all of the, uh, the fixed assets that we need, chairs, music, speakers. We, we have all of that, but we have to be prepared. He could send somebody and say, you know what, I would send them there, but they wouldn't stay long because of X, whatever it is. Lord, help us to do exactly what you want. Now, his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. Verse 26. And he summoned one of the servants and began inquiring what these things could be. What is that infernal racket? And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. Oh, this older son, I can just see him dirt on him. (laughs) What? 
but he became angry. This is his brother. This is his brother. He hadn't seen him in a long time. But he became angry and was not willing to go in. <laughs> I ain't going there. I ain't getting up on that platform with them. And his father came out and began pleading with him. Isn't that like a good pastor? Listen, listen. <laughs> Verse 29. But he answered and said to his father, look. Look, exclamation point. Look, old man. <laughs> For so many years, I, everybody say I. I. I have been serving you and I have never neglected a command of yours. And yet you have never given me, everybody say me, a young goat so that, I, so that I might celebrate with my friends. You see this dirt on my face? It's because I've been out in the fields while you were in here dancing and having a good time. Where is my goat? Where is my fatted calf? But when the son of yours, look, and it's not even his brother anymore. <laughs> He's just a heathen. But when this son of yours, I hear that sometimes because if Tyler does something wrong, she says, do you know what your son did? You mean our son? But when this son of yours came who has devoured, you remember father, he's devoured your wealth with prostitutes. You killed the fattened calf for him. Do you realize that you just gave this prostitute and loving son of yours a party? And he said to him, son, look at this. You have always been with me and all that is mine is yours. Look at this. You have always been with me and all that is mine is yours. The problem is he wasn't using what he had access to. Sometimes we see people and I have had times where I've went to churches and all of a sudden, in my mind, I'm just, I'm just going just to enjoy. I just want to go enjoy this. And then somebody gives out a message, and God hits me with the interpretation. And the ones who are really close to the Lord, I can tell they're receiving it. But then afterwards, there are people that have, I can see. Why did he use this stranger... <laughs> To interpret this and not me. I've been here. Listen, you have always been here. But have you been praying when a message is given out? Have you been praying and asking, as the word says, give me the interpretation of this message for the church? Because the Bible clearly says to ask. If somebody else comes along and they're asking, if somebody else comes along and they want to sing, if somebody else comes along, they have a word. If somebody else comes along and they have a gift of prophecy, if they come along and they line up people along this church that you have seen have problems over and over and continue to have problems and everybody's prayed for them many, many times and nothing happens but somebody comes in and just runs down through there and they're all healed, will you get Give glory to God and thanks to God or will you sit there and say why did God use them and not me it ain't fair that's exactly what those Pharisees did whenever Jesus would come into the temple come into the sanctuary he would begin to use the gifts and use the kingdom of God and the power of God and the people the, the, the Pharisees would be mad saying he better not heal on this day of the Sabbath day that's exactly what religious people will do today because when some Somebody comes in and they're not afraid to be used of the kingdom of God and let God flow through them. You're going to make them mad because they've been sitting back. They have been in the house. They have always been there. Everything that is 
is his is theirs. The only difference is they never use it. Oh, God, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us if we have not allowed you to, to use us. Have mercy on us, God, if we have not allowed you to flow through us. Oh, God, have mercy on us. Oh, have mercy on us if we become ease in Zion. Have mercy on us if we become comfortable. Oh, God, make us uncomfortable. Make us uncomfortable, God. Lord, we don't want to be stagnant, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah. I want to be close to him. You know, that's why we, that's why we love when a revival breaks out somewhere. That's why we love when Pastor Benny comes to the Bilo Center because it gets us out of our normal, comfortable routine. It shakes things. Amen. And it can cause us to have hope again, have faith again. Oh, we need fresh fire in this church. We need youth in this church. We need these seats filled with fresh life. Do you realize that God has ideas in people that are intended just for this place? He just has to prepare us to receive it. Oh, God, I love shut up. I want to be ready for anything that he has for my life. I want him, I want, I, Hey, listen, there's too many people going to hell every day. There's too many pe there is too many people falling away from the word. There's too many people getting relaxed in what the real gospel is. There's too many people uh, getting so much on grace that they don't even go to church anymore because they feel like no matter how they live, they're going. And there's too little time to be wasting. He said to him, son, you have always been with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours was dead. Look, oh, he reminds him just like he reminds us. Listen, somebody gets on your nerves. Listen, there's going to be people that, oh, man, there are going to be people that are going to come in here and listen, the devil doesn't want them to stay He's going to put things in your mind that are going to cause you to have friction against them. I'm telling you this, not because of who I think you are, but because I know who the devil is. I've been here long enough. I know that once you get past the initial process of being here, oh man, we stick beside each other. Like family. But God help anybody else that tries to come in. <laughs> there is a process. And we need to look at them just like this. That older son said, this son of yours, this king reminded him and said, look, this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live and was lost and has been found. Whoever comes through these doors, we need to remember, this is a lost brother or sister, whether I'm, I've never met them before in my life, it's a lost brother and sister. The Lord has known them all their life. I've never seen them before. I don't know how many hairs are on their head. If I go into a church, they'll never know how many I used to have right here. I used to have more than I do now. But the Lord has always known me, and he's always known those people that are coming in. So give them a chance because... 
It's a lost brother. It's a lost sister. And the Lord has sent them there. I'm preaching from my heart really hard right now. Oh, the devil, he, he, he knows what to do. You could be coming in and think, oh, they see me. They're going to hold the door. And then they, oh, they let go of the door. I was right here. Why didn't they hold that door open for me? And it, it's little, and you say, oh, it's no big deal. But then it can grow into something of such magnitude. Before, it's just, they didn't notice, and you thought, oh, I thought they probably saw me. Oh, well. But over time, the enemy will feed on that and work on that. And then later on, it could be months. But months later, that story would be, Oh, they looked at me and scowled. And then they shut the door and they tried to lock it. And then they got their kids to hold on to it. And I said, I'm coming in this church in Jesus' name. I mean, it can turn into something so different. Why? Because the enemy, he wants to divide you from your lost brothers and sisters. Do you know why? Because he knows that there is a treasure in these earthen vessels. He knows that the God has put something in them that will be a benefit to you. But if he can divide you, then you will never be able to receive the blessing that they have. This son, I got to tell you this, and then I'm going to let you go. I'm going to, do y'all see why I have to preach this Sunday morning? This is like, I, God spoke to me and told me this is, and I said, dear Lord, help me. <laughs> and I didn't know all of this was going to be here. <laughs> you know, that's why he says, don't, that's why, I know that's why he says in the word, don't think about what you're going to say. <laughs> because if he told you, you'd say, you know what? <clears throat> I think I'm coming down with a cold. <laughs> Brother Ricky, I need you to take over for me. <laughs> he says, look, just get in front of the council. The Holy Ghost will give you what to say. <laughs> this son got disconnected from, the father, from his father, the king. <clears throat> and it's funny, he went into another country but the one who was really disconnected was really the one who stayed home. Because even though one of them left and went out, at least he knew he was out. At least he was able to say, what am I getting versus what I could have if I was with my my." My father, my king. The other one becomes so comfortable. He was working in the field that he got disconnected. I was praying this afternoon and I wrote this down and I wrote the date. Anytime I ever hear something from God, listen. If you ever get a word from God and you know, oh, this is God, I know it is, and he speaks to you and you write it down, you need to write the date. I'm going to tell you why. Because how many of you have ever, you ever get in a place where you say, oh, I just don't know if God's speaking to me. I don't know if he speaks to me anymore. And in your mind you think, oh, God, it's been years. I always look back and say, wait a minute, he told me this. And I remember how I felt at that very moment. And then I realized, devil, get out of here. <laughs> he spoke to me. Look at here. And I began to read that stuff because he knows what God has said. And he, I, I, I enjoy that relationship. And this is what God was speaking to me when I was thinking and praying about this son who stayed at home, who was in the field. The other son's coming home. He's mad at his father. Because he is so consumed with the work that he's doing. 
even though the work might be of no effect. If I'm going to be in the field, I want to be effective. The way I can be effective is I have to know him. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. He said, the relationship is more important than the work. That's all he had to say. The relationship is more important than the work. This son was so busy about being in the field that he neglected the relationship with his father. To the point when his father began to celebrate for this other son who wanted the relationship. I want to... Father, I've been far away from you and I realized what I'm missing. I realized I was far from you and I realized that I didn't have your benefits and you know what you gave me? It's gone because I couldn't have nothing without you. I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. Will you just forgive me? Let me be a servant, one of your servants so that I can have some bread so I don't have to go and eat that, those pig pods. His father, he, he wants the relationship with me. I hadn't heard this from my older son for so long. Even though he has stayed here and all that I have had has been his, I'm going to put a coat on him. I'm going to put a ring on his finger. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed him. I'm going to give him the best because of the relationship. This older son neglected the relationship for the sake of the work. You can't be effective in the work if you're neglecting the relationship. You can't be an effective Christian if you're neglecting reading your word. You can't, you can't be effective in ministry if you're neglecting prayer. You can't be effective for the Lord if you're neglecting spending time with him. I'm going to show you how important the relationship is. Before he uses you, he first has to have you submit to him and accept his salvation. Right? He's got a big work for you. But before he will do anything with you, he first has to restore the relationship. That's how important the relationship is. Once you are saved, then he says, now I'm going to use you. Without the relationship, you have a kind of authority, but lack divine authority. Without divine authority, you have no access to the power of God. When we become saved, there are benefits that are automatic. We get them. They're, on, they're autonomous. We get them. Sometimes... Uh, because we are looking for other blessings and we don't see it. Maybe we, oh, I would love to be able to go lay hands on this person that's in this wheelchair and then get up. But we don't spend the time with God to have that access. You have all the access. It's yours. But you have neglected to spend the time with God to understand the divine authority that he gives you. That's why you see Christians, they're all saved, but there seems to be more power one has than another. It's about the delegated authority that he has given to them. He will give to you if he can trust you with that gift. I want him to be able to use me any way he wants to. You should be able to tell. You should be able to tell when you have spent time with him. I have never, never, even in those times where I felt completely alone and distant from God, if I'm just whining, I'm using this for me, I'm not talking about you, I really am. If I'm just whining, then I may leave that time trying to get, get close to him, I may give up on it and leave frustrated. But if I really get in my mind, God, I just want to spend time with you. I know how I feel right now. I know how I feel far from you, but I know. And I begin to quote scripture. I have never, when I have been in that mentality, not whining, not saying, oh, you just won't come around because I've been there before. Anybody? 
God, I just want to be close to you. When I'm really real and say, I am not going to move until I feel you. I have never left a closet meeting. I have never left a time of getting in his face where I didn't know that I had an encounter with him. Now I have my mind made up. If I'm going to really do this, I'm going to do it until I have an encounter. And he's always met me. Sometimes it's sudden. Because all of a sudden I'll just be saying, Lord, I'm, I just want to be close to you. And I, I want to be used by you. All of a sudden, boom, it's like the Holy Ghost train just shows up. And all of a sudden I just, <laughs> and I'm just doing like that. Listen. Hope had this funny video the other day, and it was, uh, I don't know if somebody's seen it, but it was just so funny because it showed this dog, and he looked sad. It was like one of, you seen this? It was like from one of those commercials where uh, they're singing, wanting you to adopt, and it says, how I cry in front of, how I cry in front of people, and it's just like a little tear drop, and it said, but how I cry whenever I'm alone, it was like, this dog howling, and you know, that's how it is when we're here. Now, not all the time. When the Holy Ghost really moves, boy, we don't care. But when we're in front of people, sometimes it's just, praise the Lord. Glory to his name. I, I just worship you and your magnificence. But when you really get down to real worship, you don't care what you sound like. Oh, I can be at home. I can be at church. And it's just, Rah! I mean, you just let it flow because you're letting it be vocal how you feel on the inside and you don't care what anybody else thinks because you feel so good. Why don't you just go ahead and let him have his way and feel good? <laughs> I must have got started early because look, we're on time. Do y'all think the Sunday morning crowd needs this next week? I'm sure it'll be a little different, but I, there's just some things that I've got to touch on. I'll save that for next week. Oh, Jesus. How many wants to be on fire for him? I'm going to close with the audience, and then I'm going to, our internet audience, and then I want to ask you a question. We want to thank you guys for watching us on online. If uh, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we want to let you know that you can also watch at www.livestream.com slash Liberty Ministries. Liberty Ministries is in all lowercase. Uh, that is our new streaming service, and you can catch all of the videos. You can catch them live there, or you can catch them live at lmcigreenville.org. Uh, but we also put everything on youtube.com slash LMCI Greenville. So any one of those places, uh, you know, we hope you can go back. We've got so much content on there that we hope blesses you uh, and educates you and helps you because that's what we're all about. We want to, to help you to become better. We want to uh, help you to find your purpose and to just enjoy the Lord and have a life and live it effectively and fully. But listen, before any of this stuff can help you, you first have to come to the Lord. You first have to come to Jesus. You have to become one of his citizens again. You have to be reconciled to the kingdom of heaven. And then all of these other benefits, all of this, uh, all the other things in your life will begin to come together just because his influence becomes a part of your life. I pray that if you don't know him, that you would let him come into your life right now. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I know that you died on the cross. You shed your blood for my sins. And I accept what you did on that cross for the remission of my sins. Lord, from this day forward, you, Jesus, you are my Lord. You're my owner. Come into my life and help me. If you prayed that prayer I hope that you will go to lmcigreenville.org, click contact at the top and let us know. God bless you. Ronnie, will you get us a song ready? We'll, you can remain seated just for a moment. Every head 